Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use the distributive property to find the area of a rectangle. The distributive property can be a helpful tool when multiplying, and when we find the area of rectangles, we multiply side lengths, so we're able to use the distributive property. Now I will say, this may be a little confusing at first, but stick with me and we will get this down. Let's jump into number one, where we have a rectangle with side lengths of four feet and nine feet, and we have unit squares covering the rectangle to help us visualize the area and what we will be doing with the distributive property. Now remember, for the area of a rectangle, we can multiply side lengths. So we can do four feet times nine feet or nine feet times four feet here. Let's set this up as four times nine. But let's say we don't know what four times nine is. Yes, that's awesome if you do, but stick with me through this basic example and it will help us with more difficult problems. Well, one thing we can do here is break apart our multiplication problem into simpler numbers to work with. For example, here we can break apart four feet or nine feet. Let's do nine feet. We can break this apart into six and three, seven and two, five and four, four, whatever we want, as long as it still equals nine, as long as it adds up to nine. Let's do five and four. So I'm going to split nine feet into five feet and four feet. So we can split this rectangle right here. This is five feet and this is four feet. Basically, we're going to find the area of this shape and this shape and then Add those together to find the total area of the rectangle. We're going to distribute this side length, four feet, to this five feet here and this four feet here. Let's go back to our original problem, four times nine. But we broke this up, we broke nine up into five and four. So we can rewrite this as four times and then in parentheses, we put five plus four. So we broke apart a number in our multiplication problem, the nine. Now we distribute, which means we take the four to the five and the four. So we do four times five and four times four. And then we will add those. So let's write that out. This equals four times five plus four times four. And we are using parentheses there to group our multiplication facts. Now let's multiply. So we have four times five, that gives us 20, plus four times four, that gives us 16. So now we have 20 plus 16, that gives us 36, and we're working with feet here, and since this is area, this is square feet. And this is our final area. So to recap, we took this nine feet right here and we broke it apart into five feet and four feet. We then took this side length, four feet, and distributed it to five feet, and four feet. Four feet times five feet gave us 20 square feet here, and then four feet times four feet gave us 16 square feet here. 20 plus 16 gave us that total area of 36 square feet. So again, assuming we didn't know four times nine, we were able to break that apart and use the distributive property to figure that out. We used what we knew to figure out what we didn't. Now you may be thinking, that was a lot of work for that type of problem, and that made it overly complicated. Well, that's because we are new to this, and I explained every step along the way. The more problems we go through and practice, the quicker and simpler this will become. Let's move on to number two, where we have a rectangle with side lengths of 
12 feet and 7 feet. We need to find the area by multiplying those side lengths. But I'm not sure what 12 times 7 or 7 times 12 is. So let's use the distributive property as a strategy here. We can break this apart however we want. We can break apart 7 or we can break apart 12. Let's break apart 12 into 10 and 2. 10s are nice to work with, so that's a number to look out for. Let's break it apart right here. We have 2 feet and 10 feet. So our original problem, we needed to multiply the side lengths of 7 feet and 12 feet. So 7 times 12. But we broke apart 12 into 10 and 2. So we can rewrite this as 7 times 10 plus 2. Now we can distribute the 7 to the 10 and the 2. So we have 7 times 10 plus 7 times 2. 7 times 10 gives us 70 plus 7 times 2 gives us 14. 70 plus 14 gives us 84. And that's our total area here. 84 square, and I'm going to use the abbreviation here, so SQ, feet. So to recap, we broke apart 12 feet into 10 feet and 2 feet. We then took this side length, 7 feet, and used the distributive property. So we did 7 feet times 10 feet and 7 feet times 2 feet. And 7 feet times 10 feet gave us an area of 70 square feet right here. And then 7 feet times 2 feet gave us an area of 14 square feet right here. And then we did 70 square feet plus 14 square feet to give us that total area of 84 square feet. Let's try one more example and move on to number three. Taking a look at number three, we have a rectangle with side lengths of 5 meters and 18 meters. So we need to multiply these side lengths to find the area. We need to do 5 meters times 18 meters or 18 meters times 5 meters. So let's set this up as 5 times 18. But we can use the distributive property here to figure this out. Let's break 18 apart into 10 and 8. Like we talked about earlier, 10s are nice to work with, so let's do that. So we can break this apart, we will say right here, and this is 10 meters, and this is 8 meters. So let's rewrite this as 5 times 10 plus 8. Now we can distribute the 5 to the 10 and the 8. So we have 5 times 10 plus 5 times 8. 5 times 10 gives us 50 plus 5 times 8 gives us 40. Now we add 50 plus 40 gives us 90, and that's our area. So 90 square meters. 5 times 18 equals 90, but we were able to use the distributive property in order to break that down into multiplication facts we were able to use. So we took 5 meters and distributed that to 10 meters and 8 meters. 5 meters times 10 meters gave us an area of 50 square meters, and then 5 meters times 8 meters gave us an area of 40 square meters. 50 square meters plus 40 square meters gave us that total area of 90 square meters. So there you have it. There's how to find the area of a rectangle using the distributive property. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.